Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you're with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And this week we're going to focus on children. Yes, it's something that's near and dear to all of our hearts, whether we're parents, grandparents, or aunts and uncles, or whatever it may be. What's going on with the kids in Oklahoma? There's a lot going on, and we've got somebody with us today that can tell us an awful lot about what's on the horizon this year for kids in Oklahoma. We'll learn more about the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. Stay with us. You're watching The Verdict. idea of sending American money out of our own economy these days for foreign oil is madness. Yet we're spending $25 billion a month on foreign oil. America's 100-year supply of natural gas can break this pattern and strengthen our economy. See how it can create jobs, generate clean electricity, fuel our cars, and protect our environment at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Hospital. Go to saintsok.com and reserve your time online. Why didn't we think of that? Hello once again and welcome back to The Verdict. Our guest is here and Kent's going to introduce them. Yeah, we're really pleased today to have Linda Terrell, the Executive Director of the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. Uh, join us to talk about what's going on with kids in Oklahoma and what her institute does to help the lives of kids, all of them, whether they're in trouble or not. Uh, she has been the executive director since 2010. Uh, prior to that time, she spent the previous 25 years or so uh, working in the area of uh, children's rights and children's protection. She's received a number of awards for her work in that regard including uh, being named as a commissioner on the Oklahoma Commission on Children and Youth for a number of years here in Oklahoma. Uh, she is uh, uh, an outstanding representative uh, uh, coming here telling us about a truly outstanding organization of which I have personal knowledge. And we're really pleased, uh, uh, Linda, to have you. Welcome to The Verdict. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. We have done shows with people representing the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy before, but sometimes our viewers miss certain episodes. So kind of give us some background on your organization. The organization is 26 years old and was started out of a lawsuit that Oklahoma was dealing with around maltreatment of children. And as a result of the lawsuit, two entities were created, the Oklahoma Commission on Children and Youth as our sister organization in the government sphere of protecting children, and the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy to be the voice, to be bold, to be loud about the needs and the protection of children. So I think that's a rich history for us to, to be vocal on behalf of children's needs. But your organization is a private organization, not a government organization. It is. It's a 501c3. It's a private nonprofit. 
and you, you survive uh, and pay your, your budget bills uh, based upon contributions. Absolutely, and we are a charitable organization, so all those contributions mm -hmm. are, are tax deductible. Now, is part of your goal to enact legislation or to get legislative uh, action to, to change and, and improve the rights for children? It is. We are a policy a advocacy organization and pride ourselves on data-driven advocacy. Well, give us some, some highlights then. What, what, uh, what, uh, champions, what causes have you championed in the past? successfully? The Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy was very instrumental in starting an organization called now called Smart Start Oklahoma that was about that is about early childhood issues. We incubated that conversation, that dialogue helped create all of that to make sure and ensure that children have an opportunity to be successful in school as well as to get their needs met around health and those early years that are so critical, especially with brain development, so that their cognitive ability is formed. Well, tell us about Smart Start. I mean, what is it? Is it a is it a legislative program? It is actually a private public partnership that has been created as a result of some good work of a great number of people, of which the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy was a part. But to change children's lives in school or at home? Prior to school, Prior early to education, school. to make sure that children in their earliest years are currently prepared and ready and successful in their school career. So is that in part why Oklahoma has such a good reputation for early childhood education? Absolutely, yes. It's one of the positive numbers that we have for children in our state, which unfortunately is rare because most of our numbers are not very good for children. It would seem to me, though, that when you're advocating for children, it would be hard to line up on the other side. Are, are there legislative issues, though, that nonetheless are just controversial and tough to get through the legislature? There really are. And the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy is currently in the process of expanding its scope to include the national level. And unfortunately, the Children's Defense Fund ranks our national, our congressional delegation as 49th out of 50th in voting for children's issues. Now, what would the Defense Fund do? The Children's Defense Fund is a national organization that talks about the needs of children across the states and they work very closely with our network organization which is Voices for America's mm -hmm. Children. So if we're performing lowly would, or, or on the low end would that would imply that it has a certain amount of, of children in poverty or certain ed educational levels? Is that how they're coming up they with They actually ranking? no it's actually a scorecard based on specific legislation on the national level that they have voted yes or no on and the majority of our congressional delegation votes no. Mm -hmm. But uh, so your your scope is twofold at least uh, uh, statewide yes for, for advocacy in the state legislature yes sir and then nationally for trying to get our congressional delegation our representatives and senators to vote in a certain way on certain issues from a federal level is that is that, that is correct mm -hmm. now you have lobbyists in Oklahoma do you have lobbyists in Washington no we are part of the network organization Voices for America's Children and they are the ones that do the actual lobbying on the national level. It's the largest multi-issue child uh, organization, child advocacy organization in the nation that has the widest membership. Can you give me an example of a national issue that, that has either been successful or unsuccessful? Well, I can tell you one that's up, um, okay. that has been up recently and that is the Children's Nutritional Act. The the push for making sure that our children have adequate nutrition at school. That's a federal act. Federal act, okay. yes, sir. And it is a, a big part of what we do at the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy because one of our six statewide initiatives housed at our, pl at our office is our Fit Kids Coalition. And so we are very concerned with, and I know this is an issue near and dear to your heart, mm -hmm. Mayor, that um, talking about childhood obesity reduction. Right, and we have made some, some great strides in that inner city district in Oklahoma City. There now the fried foods are gone and, and uh, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables are delivered to kids in the afternoons, and so we're, we're making some headway. Yes. I'm wondering, though, if, if it didn't come under the, under the guise of uh, some unfunded mandate, would that be the reason that our congressional delegation might not have wanted it because it didn't have any funding that, that, re that, that went with the, uh, the local government's ability to You pass? know, there, there are a variety of reasons behind all of those issues, and I know that they are all very complicated. What we are trying to do is help our congressional delegation understand that some of those votes really affect us on a state level. We don't live in a vacuum and we can't um, just work on the state level and, and recognize the strides that we mm -hmm. need to for children. And so we are really working toward 
um, connecting with our congressional delegation to help them understand the ramifications of the of the legislation on our state in conjunction with our own current issues around our state budget. Linda, how do you draw the line though between parents that just don't seem to be doing an adequate job and government coming in and trying to fix it you know with some another program? I mean there's always going to be one more program for one more set of parents who aren't doing the job of parenting. How do you draw the line on that? And, and as a nonprofit, I guess it, you're, you're right in the middle of all that. We are right in the middle of all of that and I think the um, important part to remember about policy is that it affects us across our state and in our communities. We know that when we give adequate supports to parents and parents in a generic term if you will because families come in all shapes and sizes these days and so we say the word parents because that's something that people can relate to. But parents may be foster parents, may be aunts and uncles. Oklahoma is number one in grandparents raising children, um, grandchildren. And so we say that word in a sort of generic form. But if we have a number of grown-ups, if you will, around children in a way that offers them supports and helps them um, be able to be that support to children, that our extended families in our previous ways that we lived in close-knit families were not there anymore. So if we can substitute some of those supports to help those parents, those parents really do want to do better for their children. And so to me it's that balance and fine line of making sure that we actually provide the supports necessary, make sure that we are understanding truly the needs of children and families, particularly young families, teen birth rates recently increased in the state of Oklahoma. We have to address the fact that many of our families are young families. And so if we can provide that balance of support for them along with the overarching policies that will then also support them in a broader way, we can, cont we can have that conversation that you bring up, mm -hmm. Mayor, about the importance of finding that balance. Mm -hmm. We know that in community, People and Oklahomans care about children. We know that. Our job at the Institute for Child Advocacy is to help reinforce, push, talk to our policymakers about making sure that our budgets mm -hmm. and our policies support the values that Oklahomans have, which are children and family. She is Linda Terrell with the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. We'll be right back with another segment. This cane is called for all the grandfathers and I dedicate it to my grandfather, Franklin Allen. Me and him just had like a spiritual thing where I just learned lessons from him without him telling me anything. The three dots on the feather represent my immediate family. And as my grandfather told me about the Chickasaws, that family is the most important thing. To me, the eagle sees everything as our elders do, also representing my grandfather and his bravery in the Korean War. I actually just started on the wings for the eagles, and that's when my mother called and told me that he passed away. He took his journey. It's like somebody watching you when nobody's there. I guess he wanted me to finish it, so I finished it. He's been with me ever since. It shows how strong a Chickasaw family can be. The oil and natural gas industry help provide a revenue that uh, feeds our schools, uh, providing a better education for not only my kids, but uh, for children all over the state. It will allow the schools to buy better equipment. We'll be able to hire qualified teachers and all around to have a better educational experience. The future has never been brighter for our students here. We should be very proud of the oil and gas industry in Oklahoma. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're talking to a representative from the Oklahoma Institute of Child Advocacy, Linda Terrell. And Linda, you recently held a fall forum. What issues were on that agenda? 
We decided this year we needed to have a uniform message mm -hmm. to take to our policymakers about the needs for children. And so rather than splitting up into different uh, topical areas, we decided we were going to have a unified message of protect kids. Within that message, we developed a set of guiding principles, if you will, kind of a list of criteria or even maybe a litmus test, we would call it, that our policymakers can use when they're making decisions about how they're going to vote on either specific legislation or the budget. Things like, we value children, we need to make sure that our programs are evidence-based, research-based, that they are to scale that they are going to be successful because they are going to reach enough of the population to be able to be successful, that we are asking for our policymakers to be deliberate in their decisions around budget and making sure they're asking the question, how will this affect children and families? We are pleased with this unified voice and we'll all be carrying folders that say protect kids as we go to the Capitol this legislative session. Well, let's talk about this legislative session that's upcoming. What are going to be the principal issues on the top of your agenda? Making sure that we allow our children to have the resources they need despite this economic reality that we are in. Sort of a blanket overall statement. There are several issues that we are looking at that pertain specifically to Oklahoma's culture, if you will. One of those has to do with children of incarcerated parents. Mm -hmm. Our Kids Count fact book that we released in October was the executive summary was dedicated to children of incarcerated parents. Oklahoma is number one in the nation in incarcerating women and number three in the nation in incarcerating men. We have a large amount, a huge, overwhelming, actually, number of children who have either one or two parents incarcerated. Mm -hmm. That affects them deeply and profoundly in their abilities to grow up as we would want them to be wonderful parents and tax-paying voting citizens. These kinds of issues, not having a parent with them, really changes their life path. And so we are really going to try to look at ways to help that life path get back on the course it needs to for their success. I suppose the child <clears throat> of an incarcerated parent or parents, uh, unless there's some other family member or something to which they could, uh, and with whom they could live, is, goes into the DHS system. Actually, a smaller percentage goes into the DHS system than you really think. Uh, many of these children almost become lost children. Um, oftentimes the family members uh, will take the child in. The folks who are being incarcerated are reluctant in some cases to even tell the people, the authorities, where the children are in fear that they're going to be taken away from them. I mean there's just multiple policy issues that almost preclude these families from being vocal about the needs for these children. Hmm. And we want to help address those issues to make it a smoother path for the kids. Well, talk about Kids Count, and this is, this is a publication. What's, what's that involved? The Kids Count um, fact book that we have annually is in conjunction with the National Kids Count fact book that the Annie E. Casey Foundation supports. We have two sort of ways to get to this data in Oklahoma. This year we have produced an executive summary that gives a summary of overall data around 10 or 11, 11 indicators actually that, that indicate the health and well-being of Oklahoma's children. And then we have this executive summary that focuses specifically on incarcerated children of incarcerated parents. On the CLICK system or the data center, if you go online, you can have access to all of this information as well as access to similar indicators on a national level. So if you are a policymaker or writing a grant for the state of Oklahoma in whatever area that you may be in, you have access to the most up-to-date information that we can have. Now the important part about this data this year is for me at least, and I think this is very important, is that the data we have actually goes back to 2008. 
really is pre-recession data for our state. I believe that we will see numbers worsen over this next year as the newer data is released. Not good news for Oklahoma or Oklahoma's children as we're already 44th in health and well-being. Well, so the next Kid Count book uh, won't come out till October of 2011. That is right. And that'll pick up post-2008 yes. uh, data, which you are worried about what it may show. Yes. Of course, you need to know, but... We have to know. <clears throat> I mean, mm -hmm. we can't fix things if we don't understand them. Let me ask you a question about uh, uh, what you do and what you monitor and, and yes. how our state's doing. <clears throat> are there areas of our state, geographic portions of our state, that do better by their children than others? Unfortunately, depending on the zip code you live in, often the trajectory of your life is determined by that moment. That is unacceptable, in my opinion, for all children. We need to have those supports that we were talking about earlier in place no matter what zip code you live in. We have a high poverty state, and there are pockets of our state that have higher poverty than others. And those areas really struggle, all the way from having those support systems in place to help prevent child abuse and neglect, but also things like food deserts, thing, p areas in, in our state where people can't easily get uh, access to healthy food. We have a lot of work to do in our state to truly promote health and well-being of our children. Is that part of your agenda this year? Absolutely. The Fit Kids Coalition is working very hard on making sure that we reduce childhood obesity. We have five other uh, statewide um, initiatives out of our office. Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies is working on making sure that little babies, little babies have the supports that they need and moms and dads. We work with um, making sure that children have adequate supports out of school time. We are one of 14 states that does not provide um, additional state dollars for out-of-school time initiatives and programs for children. It's not rocket science. If they actually have something structured to do with caring adults, they're less likely to get involved in highly dangerous activities. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty easy. We know that. And so we work with all of our um, statewide initiatives. Another one we're working on is teen pregnancy prevention and making sure that we have healthy teens in Oklahoma healthy teens that are going to graduate, that are going to go on to higher education, and that are going to have the adequate resources and foundation to provide for their own families in the future. Where do we stand, uh, if you know or just have a general idea <coughs> uh, relative to uh, other states uh, on teen pregnancy? Do we have a pretty high rate? We do. In fact, recently statistics showed that we have worsened in teen pregnancy on the 18 and 19 year olds. Um, the only state that is worse than us is Mississippi. Lots of people say, thank goodness for Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have a lot to do in that area. Are there areas where volunteers could help and there might be church groups out here looking for a project? Absolutely. What should they do? Uh, call us, uh, get in contact us, with us. We have in-house opportunities for volunteering and we are looking for groups to help get loud and bold with us in advocacy. So if you have a heart for children, if folks have a heart for children, give us a call and we will help you be that voice. And we will put your contact information on the screen in the last segment that of our show. Linda, great. thank you very much for coming on the show and uh, illustrating a lot of the needs for uh, Oklahoma's children and for being an advocate 365 days a year. It's certainly a, a valued uh, vocation you've chosen for yourself. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate being here. And Kent and I'll have a final word when we get back. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. 
legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We visited with Linda Terrell. She's an advocate for all sorts of children's issues across the state. Does a wonderful job representing Oklahoma's children, both uh, at the state level and also the national level. And that's an organization I know you've had some experience with in the past. Yes, it's an organization that uh, really does a wonderful job. They have very sound, uh, uh, fact-driven, as uh, Linda referred to it, uh, data to give to uh, policymakers. Uh, it isn't just emotion although emotion is certainly part of it, but they do their homework, they know what they're talking about, they're solid citizens that make up that volunteer organization and have been around a long time, and they're doing really great work for the kids. Let me give you some contact information if you'd like to contact Linda or give ideas uh, or uh, volunteer opportunities. Uh, OICA.org, OICA.org is her website. Or if you have an idea for a show that you'd like to see here on The Verdict, a topic you'd like to see us discuss, or a person you'd like to see interviewed, drop us a line on our website. That address is theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. That's going to do it for this week's show. Our thanks to Linda, and best of luck to her with all her uh, efforts to help children in the state of Oklahoma. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We will see you next week right here on the set of The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.